As many of you know, right-wing billionaire David Koch has recently died. <laughs> yeah. Now, I am just completely, you know, upset and taken aback by this, as you can tell. No, but seriously, let me explain something to a lot of right-wingers who are taking this badly. One, I think they're upset because they're losing one of their main sugar daddies, but... They're clutching their pearls because liberals are explaining why this was a very bad person. I mean, if climate change ends up killing everyone and the planet becomes uninhabitable and human beings go extinct, David Koch in large part shares the blame. He's not solely responsible, but he certainly is largely culpable for that because that's the legacy that this individual leaves behind. And... Dying doesn't just suddenly make people good. Like, if you lived your life as an evil human being who caused harm to not just communities, but to the planet, I'm sorry, because you die, that doesn't mean that we have to handle you with kid gloves and say nice things about you. No, if you were a bad person, then we need to be realistic and evaluate your legacy that way. And as I alluded to, David Koch was a horrible person. I mean, he funneled billions of dollars into organizations that promoted climate change denialism. And he did this because he knew regulations to mitigate the damage that climate change would cause would cut into his company's profits potentially. So, as Tim Dickinson explained in this 2014 piece for Rolling Stone, Coke Industries were some of the biggest polluters in the world. He bought off politicians that killed unions. He contributed to conservative organizations that fought against LGBTQ and women's rights. They fueled much of the astroturf elements of the Tea Party movement in the early 2010s. This is someone who was an absolute monster, so forgive me for not really caring as conservatives clutch their pearls when the left points this out. If you're a bad person, we're not just going to pretend like you were a good person to make other people feel better. I mean, his family has billions of dollars, so I think that they're going to be okay. But I mean, the pearl clutching is just par for the course. That's what conservatives do. They call the left snowflakes, say that we're hypersensitive, and then whenever something happens that offends them, then they denounce that and say that we're being overly sensitive. Ben Shapiro did it. Pretty much everyone did it. And it's because, you know, David Koch and the Koch Network, they had their hands in every single cookie jar. How many people are funded by the Koch brothers. Even Dave Rubin sold out and started taking Coke money. So everyone loves the Cokes because the Cokes, I mean, they spent a lot of money buying people off. Now, an example that really stood out to me of pearl clutching came from Sean Hannity, who didn't like what Bill Maher had to say about this. Now, look, I don't like Bill Maher. I can't stand him, to be frank. But Bill Maher's reaction to David Koch's death was pretty reasonable. So, this is what Sean Hannity said in response to Bill Maher's reaction. All right, our villain of the day, yeah, it's a guy named Bill Maher. This is what he said about, well, billionaire David Koch who passed away. Yesterday, David Koch of the zillionaire Koch brothers died, please, of prostate cancer. I guess I'm going to have to reevaluate my low opinion of prostate cancer. <laughs> So f him. The Amazon is burning up. I'm glad he's dead, and I hope the end will come. I have a little message for Bill. You know, I never called for his firing. It's conservatives who stood up for him when he worked at ABC, not liberals. Uh, I never called for boycotts. I'm not going to start now. You're a jackass. You're a mean-spirited jackass. I have other words I really want to use, but... Unlike you, I work at a network that has some standards, and if I said it, I have to spend all day tomorrow and the next day dealing with that crap. The guy you're talking about and his wife donated $1.3 billion to charity. Until you do that, just keep your big mouth shut. Ooh, ooh, we have a special snowflake! I absolutely detest anyone who makes the respectability and civility argument, but if there's anyone who I think should say the least about this, it's definitely, definitely Sean Hannity. One of the most loathsome people, biggest hypocrites in all of politics. Now he says, I'd never call for boycotts, and I wouldn't call for Bill Maher to be fired. Although, if somebody happened to start a petition, I wouldn't be too mad about that. I mean, that's essentially why he brought that up. He's not bringing this up to communicate to people that he's principled, because he's not principled. This is someone 
who's a hack. He's pretty brazen about his hackiness. I mean, he has a very close personal relationship to Donald Trump. So he's not objective. He's not fair and balanced. If he actually cared about freedom of speech and was principled, he would condemn the movements that aim to criminalize BDS. But I mean, this is someone who's nothing more than a right-wing fraud. He denounces handouts Meanwhile, he doesn't tell you that the government helped him get his real estate business jump started. So this is someone who has absolutely no room to talk about hypocrisy, no room to talk about pretty much anything. Sean Hannity is the fraud of all frauds, and he's probably one of the biggest bad faith actors in all of cable news. Now, he says to Bill Maher, you're a jackass. You're a mean spirited jackass. I have other words. I really want to use, but unlike you, I work for a network that has some standards. <laughs> <laughs> really? Fox News has standards. Well, what are these standards, Sean Hannity? Explain to me what these standards are. I mean, the fact that he would have the audacity to say this is just absurd. Just because you're number one in all of cable news, that doesn't necessarily mean that Fox News does good work. Fox News is the worst thing to happen to journalism in perhaps the history of our country because they are pure propaganda. And that's not to say that CNN and MSNBC aren't bad, but the fact that you think that Fox News is somehow better than them when you are exponentially worse, it shows how delusional you are. And he also recited a line that a lot of other conservatives are using to defend David Koch. The guy you're talking about and his wife donated $1.3 billion to charity. Until you do that, just keep your big mouth shut. Oh yes, don't criticize David Koch because he was such a huge philanthropist and all the headlines stated this too. Okay. This is something that you shouldn't be bragging about. His net worth was $42.4 billion. So the fact that he only donated $1.3 billion is actually embarrassing. Especially considering the fact that he weaponized his philanthropy. And that was likely tax deductible, let's be real. And he did that to spread the Coke name. To have departments and universities named after him. He did that to give himself and his brother cover so they can continue to ruin the planet. But anytime someone criticizes him, have and propagandists like Sean Hannity can defend him by saying, well, look at all of the great contributions he's made to cancer research. I mean, to suggest that the charitable contributions that David Koch made would somehow erase the damage he's caused is laughable. Maybe, you know, Sean Hannity at some point in his life did something good. Maybe he gave five bucks to a homeless person. That one individual act doesn't say anything about his overall character. It's just one instance of him choosing to do something good. But the thing about David Koch it's, it, is it's not like we even know for sure that he was motivated to make these contributions out of the goodness of his heart. These were weaponized contributions because, again, he wanted to shield himself from criticism because he was being criticized because he's kind of fucking up the planet. So, Sean Hannity, I mean, the fact that you are going to say this, act so triggered and outraged by Bill Maher, and then probably a week from now, you'll do a segment about how college campuses, and students on college campuses, rather, are so triggered and outraged by everything, and they're the PC police. I mean, there's just, there's a certain set of standards that the right will apply to the left that they don't hold themselves to, right? So, they can be as outraged, as easily offended as they want to be, and that's not hypocritical. But any instance of left-wing hypersensitivity, understand that they will be the first to call that out immediately. So whenever you hear a right-winger talk about how easily offended the left is, show them this clip of Sean Hannity, show them the clips of Tommy Loren denouncing people who kneel during the national anthem, show them the tweets of Candace Owens who claims somebody should literally lose citizenship if they choose to desecrate a flag. I mean, there is no shortage of snowflakery, right? At the end of the day, Sean Hannity is a complete and utter joke, and the only types of people who take him seriously are people who are completely either low-information voters or genuinely have something wrong with them mentally. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous. And he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.